Hi everyone and welcome back to my Cardspiration week number eight. Uh, this is the card challenge that was inspired by Roxy Fur, and she's now started a Facebook page which is awesome so you can always go to Facebook and check out the uh, designs and videos as well as here on YouTube. So today um, I finally went out and bought one of these uh, cards magazines and I haven't even had a chance to really look through it, but there was one card in here that I really thought was kind of neat. I love the shabby chic, whoopsie, this one here. I love the shabby chic take on it. I like how they use ledger paper down there, and then just this gingham that's quite distressed up, and the sentiment is right on the gingham, and then the ribbon tied underneath. But those are probably the only elements where I copied the card. The shape of my card's different. I don't have the angel wings on it. So I'll show you. Um, I did get inspired from this card, though. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm going to do. So first thing I'm going to do, I bought some of these cards from Michael's, um, the iCraft cards. And they come in the oval shape, and I think they're a dollar fifty for. I'm not sure how many are in here. I think eight. Yes, eight cards are in here. So what I'm going to do? They come like this. So the card folds like that, and then there's a bit of a on the back. You can see how it has that little section. So I am going to use two cards to make one card, and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm going to cut off this first card right at that little tab there where the card joins the back, and then that tab there. And I'll use these other pieces as elements in another card or scrapbook layout or something. And the reason I had to do that is because I'm going to be applying a crackle surface to this and um, the first time I tried it it was quite messy and it seeped onto the other side of the card and I just wanted it to stay clean obviously if you're going to be giving this to someone. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm using this crackle medium by Folk Art and it tends to work pretty good. So my base color, the color that I want to crack through, is going to be this cinnamon brown. So I'm going to apply that to the card front, and then I'm just using a sponge brush to do that. And then I have to wait until this dries. So just a coat of brown all over all of the white part doesn't matter if it's streaky or not you're not going to see that you just but you want to make sure it's all covered in brown there just going to take a wipe and wipe up this little mess off my craft mat so I can continue to work on my card there now I used my my card is in a circular shape as you can see I used my circle cutter to cut out some ledger paper that I had picked up at the, um, it was at a thrift store, so I picked up an old ledger book. So I'm going to use a vintage photo and distress all around the edges of that. And then I also cut out, out of Modern Homemaker by October Afternoon kind of a gingham-y print right here. And this circle, these cards are five inches. I cut this one for in a four inch circle and the other one, the pinky gingham-y one, is three and one quarter inches. So I'm just going to ink that up. And then what I really liked on the front of that other card was how they had a real definite smear on the front of the gingham part. So I'm just going to finish this up, ink it around, go ahead and answer my phone, and I'll be back when this dries. There, so just so you know that you can use your heat tool to dry um, your cards if you're using um, a crackle technique. 
So I'm going to apply, next thing you do is you've applied your first coat, your bottom coat. Now you apply the crackle medium and just pour some on there and just cover it up. And I'm paying close attention to getting it around the outer edges of the card because that is the part that's going to be showing. I'm just going to make sure that all those little scallops have crackle medium on them and then just spread it around evenly and then we'll put this aside as well to dry and we can continue working on our card front. So I've applied the Distress um, uh, ink to both of these and I was mentioning before how I really liked how it was smudged a little bit on um, the gingham, or this isn't really gingham, it's diamonds, but the gingham piece that they had in the book. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take some chocolate chip ink and stamp it up. And I'm just going to stamp my sentiment onto this piece here, fairly close to the bottom. So I can line it up with the diamond shapes there. And just, it's a simple, happy birthday there. Now before I attach this piece to this one, I'm going to have to make sure this crackle piece is all done because I have to attach the ribbon. So I'm going to take my embossing tool and dry this up to speed up the process, and I'll be right back. Okay, this layer is really dry, and I think it's really important that this layer is dry. And the next thing I'm going to do is add the last layer. So my paper, if you notice, it's not truly a pink. It's almost a little bit of a coral. So I've got pink paint here, but I'm going to add a tiny bit of orange into the paint just to give it a little bit of a more coral um, color. Come on, orange. I noticed my little grandsons were painting, so it's got orange with a little bit of black blobs in it, you know? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to mix these two up a little bit, add some, it's just to, to warm up the pink a little bit. There, that's pretty good. Might even add a little bit more pink. And then I will paint the surface of my card. And from what I understand with crackle paint, I don't think you're supposed to fuss and muss with it. Just get the paint on and call it a day. Yeah, that color is perfect. There. And I can already start to see this crackling. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see how fast this is crackling on that side there. And it isn't even dry yet. I haven't had much luck with the Ranger Tim Holtz crackle paints. I don't know why. Every time I purchase them, um, they never seem to work. Or if they do, I get crackles, but they're not they're not that great. So um, I thought I'm just going to go old school and do it with the three-step process. And I think I really like it. I think I just smudged this a little bit. Oh well, it should be okay. So I'm going to speed this process up with the heat gun. Okay, you can see the crackle, other than where I touched it with my finger, but that's going to be covered up. But you can see that beautiful crackle effect. Now that this is all dry, and you can see how the other end gets sort of messy, I'm going to reattach it to the card front to make sure I've got it lined up uh, really well. So I'm just going to take the little cut marks um, where I cut the card. There's one there and one right there, and it'll line up perfectly with the card front and just glue it down. 
So I've got my uh, cover glued on. So I'm just going to make sure because the whole front looks exactly the same. Make sure I line up these little points with these lines on my grid here just to keep the front of my card straight. So next I've got my ledger paper and it's going to go right there but before I do that I'm going to take this really really pretty brown satin ribbon here and I'm normally we tie our ribbons this way but this for this one I'm going to leave a little bit of excess run it down the middle of the back here with an ATG just one little strip is good and then just need to leave a little left over for the tie in the front oopsie and make sure that my card is straight and then we're going to adhere it like so to the front so right in the center and then I'm just going to meet that up there running another strip of ATG tape right down the middle just to secure that ribbon just run it up the front and then I'm just going to cut it to match the piece that's already there and we'll deal with that in a second Next thing I have, and making sure my card is straight, I have the happy birthday piece. And we're going to apply that right on top. And then I'm going to use um, one of the roses that I made with the uh, coffee filters. And what I discovered with them, which is really neat, once they're already created and the glue has hardened on them, you can cut them down so they're not so thick, so they can sit on a card front, which I did with this one here. So you literally take some really sharp scissors and you can cut the back quite easily. I already cut quite a bit off, but it holds the rose in place because the glue that you use when you were twirling it has gone all the way through. So that's going to go here, but before we do that, we are going to take some of these nice pearls that I got at the Goodwill. So I got this color, it's a little bit, almost a very, very pale, 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 pale peach, but I think it matches this perfectly. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to lightly draw a scroll from here. And this, again, is just a little guideline for me where to glue my pearls. Just so I have some idea where to put them when I'm using the glue gun. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this now. And what I've done is just take the glue gun, run a little bead of it, lay these down, and then just keep going like that. So I did my little pearl swirls, and I wish I had swirled them in a little bit more, but it won't matter for this because the flowers are going to cover it up. So I'm just going to tie just a simple knot, just one loop even, not even a knot, right there. Just so it sort of lays at the top of the card, and I'll trim the ribbon in just a second. I'm going to place one of my homemade roses right about here and then I've got these roses that I mentioned that I had before that I got from Yoli Bean and these Michaels in their $1.50 bin has these really pretty shabby chic paper rose stickers uh, they're by Treasures by Shabby Chic and these little guys and they come in pink and blue here's the blue pair right here or the blue pack and so I'm just going to take one of the pink ones. And so before I attach these onto my card, I'm going to just take some of that um, vintage photo that was still left on the sponge and just brush it around. And on that one too. And on our little pink one. So that first little rose I'm going to tuck right up there up by the knot. 
And you kind of hold it till it dries. And then this one is going to go right about here. And again, holding it till it dries. I'm going to tuck that a little off center to the left. And I will tuck that right there beside that one. I'm just going to trim each side on an angle. And there you have my card for this week very pretty happy birthday card. I made another one too where I used more pink beads. So I wanted to see which I liked better, but they're both nice. I like them both. I think they both are very pretty. And I've got, um, my daughter-in-law has a birthday on Sunday and my dear friend Laura has a birthday tomorrow. So these cards also come with envelopes which is really nice. So I think for $1.50, that's a pretty good deal, especially with the envelopes. Now, I'm not sure with these big bulky roses if the cards will fit in the envelopes, but we can try that out. I mean, these aren't cards you're going to be mailing to anyone. So, oh yeah, they fit just nice. Just have to take some time and tuck the ribbons in, but they will fit in there really nicely. So, um, there you have my two cards for this week's Cardspiration. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you all have a beautiful, creative weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.